Well, that is very serious and the revelation that uh, Indian high commissions and consulates officials were under, um, under regular or constant surveillance is atrocious. Again, I mean, this clearly shows uh, how Canada has behaved in this whole issue. And there is a background to this. If you recall, the Washington Post carried a story, I think it was on the 14th of October, based obviously on leaks by Canadian officials of a meeting in Singapore and uh, about uh, whatever they knew about what they feel is a case that they have. And now they've admitted on the 29th of October uh, to the Committee on Public Safety, Standing Committee on Public Safety and National Security, that indeed they had leaked uh, this information uh, to the Washington Post and had even named a very senior minister in the cabin, Indian cabinet. Now, I am astounded. I mean, this sort of behavior is in contravention of all diplomatic norms. Uh, it's completely bizarre and a piece with this Canadian government. This Canadian government shelters terrorists. Uh, if you recall that uh, the, uh, another government and another Prime Minister who happened to be the father of the current Prime Minister of Canada uh, took very little or no action on the Kanishka bombing uh, where an Air India plane was blown up and a very large number of Canadian citizens be, be they Indi of Indian origin, but a very large number of Canadian citizens were killed. And uh, now, uh, in, in a situation like this, where at least 26 terrorists who have been wanted by the Indian government and uh, an extradition request had been made uh, to the Canadian government, they have disregarded, they have taken no action. So I find this whole thing quite bizarre that in turn, they are uh, blaming us. They seek cooperation with, uh, from us, but provide no evidence. They apply. I was listening to the interview of the our High Commissioner when he returned. Uh, they wanted to travel to India, this team, so-called team of professionals or technical personnel, uh, wanted to travel. When one day's notice, they, they came and said, we want to go today. I mean, that's not how visa... Uh, I'd like to see how long Canadians take to give visas to, to our delegation. So I think this is completely bizarre. This is unacceptable behavior. And I'm, I must say that our spokesperson was rather restrained uh, in, and, and the government has been rather... Well, that is very serious. And the revelation that uh, Indian high commissions and consulates officials were under con um, under regular or constant surveillance is atrocious. No country has the power to do it because according to Vienna Convention a diplomat is uh, a diplomat and his property is uh, person and property is non-violable that means you cannot touch you cannot uh, you cannot put him under him or her under surveillance but Canadian government has done it and this is, this is the rarest of rare cases of violation of international law according to Geneva, Con uh, according to Vienna Convention. And not only that, you see they have, they have gone even up to the extent of accusing Home Minister Mr. Amit Shah to be mastermind behind that. And now they have put India among the list of four countries who are cyber threat to Canada and out of this four, India has been included as fifth. So, India has been in a way declared an enemy state by Canada which is, which is very disturbing and very serious.